Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Good afternoon and good evening and welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I'm your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Business Positioning Strategist, and Author, Sean Douglas. This show is currently heard in over 70 countries, so I want to thank you to those who are listening from wherever you are. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformation. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that changed our lives and how we use this to then transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us live right here on the Blog Talk Radio Network Tuesday through Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Join our Facebook community, Life Transformation Radio Community, and interact with the guests that I bring on the show. I ask wherever you're listening to or wherever you're listening at, subscribe to Life Transformation Radio and never miss an episode. Leave us a rating review. Let us know how we're doing. You could do that on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Player FM, Radio Public, Overcast, CastBox, Himalaya app, and the Google Play Music app, or wherever it is that you currently listen to podcasts. On the show, my guests are entrepreneurs, speakers, business owners, coaches, podcasters, authors, amazing people who are impacting the world around them, and my guest today does exactly that. If you have any questions for any of the guests that I bring on the show during our live broadcast, you can call us up at 657-383-1109. Again, the number, if you want to ask my guest a question, 657-383-1109. And with that, please help me welcome to the show, my friend, Monica Sawyer. Monica, welcome to Life Transformation Radio. Hey there, Sean. Thanks for having me. I am so pumped to have you on the show because we tried this a long time ago and it didn't quite work out and we had to move some things around and I was running late today and, uh, but, but we're going to make it happen no matter what. I'm so pleased. This has been a long time in coming. That's for sure. Like almost two years. (laughs) I know. I know. Where did the time go? Right. I cannot believe it. Almost two years since we had met. And um, and a lot happened, though. You know, a lot between my stuff and your stuff. And so I am super pumped to dive into it because I have, I have seen you thrive just in 2018 alone. Leaps and bounds over what most people would consider a success. So I applaud you. Oh, well, thank you, Sean, and ditto. I've been watching you, too. I'm just amazed at the impact you're making on the world and all that you're doing, so I'm really honored to be here. Amazing, amazing stuff. So with that, the title of this episode of episode 251 is Blissful Wealth with investor and podcast host Monique Soya. She is often described as one of the most joyful people you will ever meet. But don't confuse her big smile and infectious laugh with naivete. Her life has been filled with traumatic experiences that led her to such a low place that she nearly took her own life. For over a decade, she has used the lessons she learned from her own painful journey to help people ease anxiety, overwhelm, and stress so that they can experience more joy, ease, and success in all areas of their lives. She is the best-selling author of the multiple award-winning book, Choose Bliss, The Power and Practice of Joy and Contentment. Her work in Joyous Laugh featured nationwide on stages, radio, and TV to include ABC, CBS, Fox, and the CW that reached over one million people. She speaks all over the country on topics including creating a blissful life and building blissful wealth. You can go to her website at Blissful investor.com and go to core bliss life c-o-r-e core bliss life.com it's in the show notes right there there is her facebook 
LinkedIn connect with her because she is absolutely a force to be reckoned with, and you want to connect with her and follow along in her journey. So the first question I have for you, which I believe is the most important question you could ever ask yourself, is why? Monica, why do you do what you do? Mm. Well, you don't, you don't mess around. You start with the very deepest question, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I love that. You know, um, as, I, as you said in my bio, um, my journey has been really traumatic. Um, I grew up in an area, and I'm not sure how many people can relate to being bullied or not. I know that a lot of us have gotten bullied when we were young for a lot of yep. different reasons. But my reason yep. was that I was a different color in a very white community. And um, because of that, I learned very young that I was going to be alone, that people were not going to like me. And I suffered a lot of trauma at the hands of bullies. And then as I grew older, the bullying became more serious and some horrible, horrible things that happened to girls from teenage boys happened. And so my journey, it was interesting because, you know, I'm kind of a naturally predisposed person to joy. Like I want to be happy, but it's like life just kept knocking me down and it got harder and harder and harder until I got to this very, very low place where I wasn't sure if I could go on, I just couldn't see a light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, however, at that point, um, I was turned on to a coach who literally, I feel like he saved my life. He turned things around for me. And the one thing that happens, and I know, Sean, you know what I'm talking about because of, of, you're such a compassionate person, that if you have ever suffered like that, you don't want to see other people suffer. And for me, that became my life mission, is to make sure that other people don't suffer the way that I know so many do and that I have, and to give them tools to pull themselves out of this place of despair. Because here's the truth. Right. You know, if we, each of us, if we lift ourselves up, we then lift up 10 people around us who then lift up 10 people around us, right? There's this um, wave effect or this echo effect mm -hmm. that then helps to lift communities um, and, and sort of humanity, which seems like such a big goal, but right, we can do it one person at a time. And so that's my big why is I just want to see more joy on the planet. I don't want people suffering. That's my big why. I love that. And I know exactly what that feels like because I, too, uh, try to take my life and I, I just look back at that and I want to tell myself, like, dude, look at all that you're going to accomplish. Like, don't even worry. But in that moment, we don't feel that way. There, you know, we feel like the world is ending around us and crumbling and there's no way out. And why would I ever deal with this? And we're just in the lowest moment that we can ever be in and you know happy people are not taking their lives that's what I mean that's what it comes down to happy people are not taking their lives fulfilled people are not taking their lives people who are full of bliss are not taking their lives yeah. we need to get to the root cause we need to get to the pain we need to get to the reason why these are happening and so that's why I asked the question why like what is your why because yeah. I feel like that's the most important question you could ever ask. The second most important question that you can ever ask yourself, and I love looking back at the last 10 years of my life and seeing just that transformation, and you can actually roadmap how you got here and put the puzzle pieces together and say, ah, I see how that fit together. That had to happen because that happened because that happened, and now look. So I ask mm -hmm. you, what is a transformational moment? What was that moment in time? that was the catalyst that put you on the path to what you're doing today? Mm, okay. So um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about that really, really dark place that you were talking about. Yeah. It's so interesting because yeah. people talk about this as a dark place. We hear this, right? All the time. I was in such a dark place. I was in such a dark place. And I'm sure many of your listeners can really relate to that. And the truth about this is it is actually dark. It's what you just said, Sean. It's like you can't, see out of it. 
it does feel so dark and so heavy. And, um, and that was the place that I was in, I would say about 15 years ago, um, I had been, so after all these things that I had told you that I, I had gone through, I also went through a car accident. Now I'm a professional dancer. That was my life. I was, I had a world reputation, um, wow. and deepest passion. And then I was in this horrible car accident that is not my fault, by the way. And I lost my life. I literally became a cripple. I was in a wheelchair for two years. Oh, my gosh. And I know. And you like, now you look at me, you would never know that. But Right. I was like, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. And in those days, I remember that's when I really fell into this depression, this really dark place that you and I talked a little bit about. And um, I remember one morning, I had been really depressed probably for a couple of years. And I had been in bed for a week, just crying. I don't know if, you, if anybody can relate to this, but I had the covers pulled over my head um, because I was in a dark place and I couldn't stand the light, right? And so right. I was just in bed crying. And I heard my mom's voice in my head. And she said to me, Monica, get out of bed. You know, if you get some air, you'll feel better, right? And thank you, mom. Um, so I try to get out of bed. So I pull the covers off, you know, I kick them aside and I try to get out of bed and my legs are so weak still that I fall to the ground and I can't wow. move. I mean, I just can't get up. So I just sat there. I pushed myself up, you know, so my back's up against the bed and I just cried. And in that moment, I prayed. I said to God, you know, God, I can't keep doing this. So either bring me home, have mercy on me, or teach me how to live. Wow. And I know. I love so, those moments. Right? And, and that's when it all changed because about an hour later, God answered my prayer. I got a phone call from a girlfriend that I hadn't heard from in two years. And she heard me crying. And she's the one that then turned me on to my coach. And you know, my coach, I say he, he saved my life, right? That was the moment that that journey started. And I can't say that it was easy. Anytime you're pulling yourself up, you know, to the next spot, whether it's from that dark place to deciding to stay alive, or whether it's in your business or anywhere in your life, when you're pulling yourself up, it's hard, right? right. It's not easy, but it's so worth the journey. And that's, that was the place, that was the moment where everything turned for me. And I mm. decided I wanted to be alive. And I was not going to live my life the way that I had. It had to be different. And, um, and I was going to make it different. So that's when things turned for me. I love it. I, and I love the moment of decision. That's what I live for. I know people that are paralyzed by decision and they just live their life according to the decisions that other make for them, whether it be mm -hmm. a spouse, whether it be in the military. Um, a lot of, a lot of what I see veterans coming out is they've been told what to do their whole entire career for 20 years. Then they get out and now they got to think for themselves. Like they have to make those decisions for themselves. They have to, usually they have somebody at the top going, Hey, do this. Hey, do this. Hey, do this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then we go, we go do it one of the fears that I have. I know people who are in relationships where oh, I'll just let him decide and we'll just do whatever we got to do. You know, I don't, I don't think that that's the proper way to be living. You made a decision and those decisions, they always said that decisions define us. And I made a decision not to do, not to go through, not to continue the course of life that, that, that I was living. And I believe that we're rooted in these decisions that we make in a sense that had we not made a decision at all, it could have gotten worse. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we, uh, but we did. Right. And so that's why I called my book Choose Bliss, because we have a choice, you know, yes. and, and not deciding is a choice to not decide. Right. Right. And what you're talking yeah. about here is so relevant, so pertinent, because we do. We choose to either make the decision or we don't. We choose to follow everybody else's orders or we choose to make up our own minds. And those are the defining moments is, you know, every moment in life is a choice. Like what time are you going to get up in the morning? What are you going to wear? All of those choices are, these cho are what we make every day. 
but there are defining choices that turn our life around. And it's in those moments of choice that we create who we are, right? Yes. It's almost as if I've read a portion of your book and teed it up nicely. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, wow, it was so relevant. (laughs) I I know you. You're good, you. Oh, man, I love the way that, 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 that you put it out there like that because I, I know someone's going to get that clarity, that level of clarity that you just gave is so key. You either choose to not choose because that's what you're doing by not choosing. You're still making the decision. We're, we're faced with decisions every day. If I just lay in bed, you can't blame it on it. You can't blame it on the depression, the medication, the whatever, unless you physically can't walk, but you're right, man. We choose to not choose. And it's just, it, it, it's terrible. So with that, I don't believe that anything happens by chance. I believe everything happens for a reason. Everything is teeing us up for the next breakthrough, for the next challenge, for the next tribulation. Everything works together. So because of the why that you have and the transformational moment that you endured and have overcome and have has pretty much defined you moving forward. How have you used that to then elevate the world around you? Mm. Well, we touched on that a little bit, right? Yeah. So, um, so, yeah. So I, um, so it was an interesting journey for me. So I, when I finally got my coach and we started talking about sort of what it was that I wanted in my life, there were some things that I discovered. So because I had had such a traumatic um, experience growing up, I was constantly on this search for how to be happy, how to overcome all of that and step beyond it and be a joyful person. So I had developed a lot of my own skills and techniques, which then my coach repointed me back to. And then he gave me some, and then he hired me as a coach. And so I became a coach to executives. So fascinating, right? To go from this place to another place. I became a coach to executives, and the thing that I found with most of these executives was that the reason that their lives were failing or their businesses were failing was just because they weren't happy anymore. They weren't motivated. They weren't inspired. And so I took my life experience and all the techniques I had put together, and I started to coach them on how to create what I now call bliss. So that's where the journey began for me as far as taking this out into this into the world. I loved coaching, but one of the things that I realized is that I could only reach so many people if I was doing this one-on-one. Right. Even if I went into groups and started to talk, to speak on stages, which I did, I could only reach so many people. And I wanted the world to have access to bliss the way that I was experiencing it. And so I wrote my book, Choose Bliss, The Power and Practice of Joy and Contentment. And to my awe and surprise and delight, the media loved it. So now I've reached over 100 million people around the world, which is incredible to me, right? So that's, like, I'm so delighted by that. Yay! So that's (laughs) how I kind of took it out into the world. And then the question that I got most from people I love getting emails and finding out how people are experiencing my book and what they're learning. But the question that I got most from people was, Monica, how do you find bliss if you're broke? Mm. You know what I mean? So and that's so fascinating to me because it wasn't like if I'm depressed, you would expect that's what people would call, would call me with, right? But it was literally right. a money question, which I thought was interesting. What's also really interesting is that somehow I had managed to take care of that piece of my life very early in life. It was one of the very first things I handled when I realized that I really wanted to choose bliss in my own life and how I decided to do that was through real estate. So now I took my passion for bliss and I've married it with real estate to create what I call blissful wealth, Mm -hmm. which is really helping people choose to build wealth and financial security in a joyful, blissful way. So it brings joy to their life and then money is not sucking life out of them like it does for so many people. 
And then that creates a foundation so they can focus on the things that make life truly blissful for them. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, so that's kind of been my journey on sort of how I've taken it out into the world with my book and with my current focus and sort of what how that's played into it. Mm. Got it. So do you think that I'm I'm just I'm I'm a very like I'm a strategist. When I I'm a pure strategist. Like when somebody's like if somebody's like, Hey, um, you need to go buy a house. You're like, awesome. I'm gonna use this example and you're gonna laugh. So someone's like, You should buy a house. You're like, That's awesome. I'm gonna Google everything. I'm gonna try to do everything myself and I'm gonna be successful. Mm-hmm. Or you can go find Bob at whatever realtor. He can walk you through the process, be that guide for you, then give you the ins and outs and everything that's supposed to happen, walk you through that process, get the home of your dreams, and you don't have to do it alone. Now, with that said, what does everybody do when starting a business or wanting to invest or starting out whatever it is that they want to do? They Google, they spend time, they're doing it by themselves, they're getting lost. Or you can pay Bob, <laughs> right, at coach wherever and have a coach walk you through it. You see what I'm saying? I do. I do. But they, but they don't do it. So do we need the strategies and the other stuff? Or, right, so it's like if, if I contact this coach, they should be able to walk me through everything. I mean, do I really need the, the, the mindfulness and the mindset and the meditations and the, and the woo-woos? And the, like, do we need all that? Or should I just employ a strategy that I should be good? <laughs> well, Sean, you know what my answer to that one is going to be. I know what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so just think about this. There are, I always tell people this, and we're going to talk specifically about real estate, and I hope I don't lose your yep. audience with, because it's relevant with everything, okay? Yep. But this is my passion, and so I just want to bring it in here. Perfect. Um, there, are a lot of, there are a million ways to make money in real estate, <clears throat> yep. and there are a million teachers teaching how to make money in real estate. So why are people not doing it? Or if they're doing it, why are they not happy doing it? Why Or why do they, they have... Why did they lose all of their money in 2008? Or why are they struggling? Why do they not sleep at night? Why are they having the problems that are often associated with real estate? The truth is not is that real estate itself is actually not that hard. But right. it's your mindset that is going to determine whether it's hard for you or not. Now, I'm not saying there aren't challenges. In any business that we do, in anything in life, we do. Getting married is a challenge, right? (laughs) Having kids is a challenge. Going to school is a challenge. We experience challenges in everything, and real estate is no different. The key is how do you deal with those challenges to come out on the other side in a way that elevates your life rather than pushing you down more into some level of darkness, right? Mindset is that key. And I tell people over and over and over again, the single biggest determining factor in your success, in life, in marriage, with your health, in real estate, no matter what you're doing, the biggest single determining factor of your success is going to be your mindset. And the really, really good news is that you have control over your mindset, (laughs) right? Yeah. is that we have control over that. You get to choose. You get to choose not necessarily what happens, but you get to choose how you're going to respond. And that very simple thing, that very simple paradigm shift in your mind will change everything. Mm. Okay, so we definitely we definitely <laughs> need, the, right? So nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Because there's so many people that I talk to. You know, I coach a bunch of people, um, some speakers, some entrepreneurs, and we do a lot of positioning and everything. And I talk about the perception. Like it had it, it has to do with how the market receives you. So if you're not doing a good job of of creating that perception of why they need to be doing business with you or whatever, the same goes in your life. 
if you are not perceived as the confident expert with authority, then why should anybody do business with you or have a relationship with you or be married to you or have kids with you or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that guy would be a good dad. Like, I don't know. Like, it, you can use it for anything, but it has to start in that mindset. And I love that we could talk about that because I don't think we hear it enough. Right. And, you know, the thing, the other thing that I really want to point out, point out, and this is a big game changer for me, is that we're out there in the world creating perceptions, Right. When you're dating, you want to be hot to the other set, the other people, right? The people yeah. of the opposite, whoever you're trying to attract. Um, when you're in a job, you're trying to look like the most competent. When you're a mom or a dad, you want to look like you know everything so your kids will follow, right? So we're always out there trying to create perception. And I think that what causes a lot of internal trauma and um, depleting of self-confidence is that we don't, we feel like we're a fraud. So we've got, we're trying to put out these perceptions out there, but we ourselves don't believe it. Mm -hmm. So the single most important perception is the perception that you have of yourself. And that perception, again, is a choice. And sometimes we don't think it is. There's like this monkey mind, right? There's all these things that are going on in our head but you have control over that. And if you can control that and you can choose how you're going to view yourself and improve your own perception of the beautiful person that you are, then when you go out there, you're creating a perception for the world that is based in a foundation of truth and authenticity. And people are attracted to you like a magnet. Right, because there's no discrepancy between who you're presenting yourself and who you truly believe you are. So our perceptions begin with our perceptions of ourselves. That's the single most important thing. When you're out mm-hmm. there marketing, you know, and I and I know you know this about me, Sean. Nobody nobody questions whether I'm blissful or not. I'm not putting on an act because I'm super consistent, and I'm super consistent because it's true. <laughs> Right. It's how I perceive myself. So any marketing that I have about bliss, people get it. They're attracted to me for that, right? And I know that that's true for you too. You stand in the truth of who you are. And Mm -hmm. this is the thing that I want us to remember is that we have a choice on what minds go, what what thoughts go on in our mind, and what our perceptions of ourselves are. And we need to start there before we get out there into the world and try to create a perception or a reputation outside of ourselves. I love it. Mm. Nailed it. If anybody that- listening right now, if that resonated with you, let us know. You can join us by calling in at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. We are live right now. On the Blog Talk Radio Network, talking to Monica Sawyer about blissful wealth and choosing bliss. Monica, let's talk about your podcast. Mm-hmm. Why did you do it? What's it about? Where can they listen? Yeah, so the podcast is called, thank you for asking me about this, by the way. I'm so excited about my podcast. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> it's like I know you. <laughs> Um, I've had time to research. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So my podcast is called Real Estate Investing for Women. And really, it's all about creating blissful wealth. So I take a very holistic view to creating wealth. We look at your mindset. We look at what I call your heart set. We look at money smarts. We look at, of course, strategies. But we look at all the different things that will help to support your success and to help you create massive success and massive wealth. Um, I personally went from $10,000, which I got as a wedding gift, to now being worth several million dollars, right? And I did it blissfully. And so I really want to help other people to do that. Now, like we said before, there's so many people out there talking about real estate and talking about strategies. 
but there aren't that many people that are taking this sort of um, holistic view of creating success in, in real estate. So that's really what the podcast is. It's, you know, creating bliss, creating wealth, putting the two together, and then creating the life that your heart deeply desires. So that's really what it's all about. Perfect. And where can they listen to the episodes? So the easiest way is just to go to iTunes um, and look up Real Estate Investing for Women, or you can look up me, Monique Escalier. So that'll come up in both. Got it. Got it. Perfect. Yeah, because I want them to go where you want them to go. Some people want Apple because it gets, you know, the new and noteworthy. All, they're all chasing that. Want to get the mm-hmm. listens, want to get the subscribers, want to get the downloads. You know, some people want them on their website because there's other information there, which is good. Uh, so I just want to direct them where you want them to go. And I love that. You niche down so far real estate investing for women tells you exactly what the show is (laughs) like (laughs) no bones about it this is what this is for so and and what i love what's that i said from a marketing guy that's high praise thank you (laughs) well even more so your show skyrocketed fast i mean i remember seeing it move up the charts fast I am so delighted and honored by that. Like even I didn't expect it. I just thought, hey, I'm going to go out there and talk about some things that are really interesting to me and hopefully other people will like it. And wow, women are just fly, you know, flocking to it in droves. So Mm -hmm. it's been a huge, um, just a huge, amazing journey for me that I'm delighted to be a part of. It's like it took on a life of its own, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I offer my podcast listeners that I'd like to offer your guests, or sorry, your listeners also, is if they would like to find out a little bit about how I actually did this, you know, turning $10,000 into, you know, several million um, and doing it blissfully, I actually have a free gift I could offer your listeners. Perfect. Would you like me to do that? Yeah. Okay, great. So it's just a free report. It may, I'm completely transparent on where I started and what I did. I actually made very bad decisions along the way at times. I bought at the top of the market at 2001 and the top of the, of the market at two, in 2008. Um, and still, I managed to be successful. So, um, and that's really a credit to what you can do in real estate. So if you're interested in kind of watching my journey, seeing what I did, and possibly even implementing that strategy into your own life, you can just go to blissfulinvestor.com. So it's blissfulinvestor.com and just download the free report. Blissfulinvestor.com. Download the report. Outstanding. What I was really going to ask you next was, what do we need to do to create blissful wealth? But now I just kind of want to direct everybody to just go get the report and you'll find out. (laughs) (laughs) like that was literally gonna be my next question so monique tell us what do we do like how are we gonna create blissful wealth and you just answered it by saying go get the free report <laughs> i love it i'm gonna go do that right now for the listeners that are listening what is your message for them what is the one thing the one takeaway the if you could just give them one nugget of knowledge that will motivate them what is that one thing that you want them to know the one thing that i want everybody to know is that they were born as these adorable little bundles of bliss and somehow along the way life may have taught them that they can't be blissful but here's the thing that i want everybody to remember bliss is your birthright. You can choose to claim that bliss every single day. Got it. That's awesome. What a great message. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Like, 
I mean, because I think it's hard to define bliss, though. I mean, what it like? What does it look like? You know, we. I I think sub. I think success is subjective. If you set out a goal to make your bed this morning and you made your bed, you're a success. In the simplest terms possible, you're a success. Did you accomplish what you said you'd accomplish? Yes, success. I also think that many, many, many successes equal the one large promise, the one large success. So you have to make a lot of different successes. What I also believe in my heart of hearts, what I believe is that whatever it is that you want to be known for, whatever it is that you want to accomplish, whatever it is that you want to be rewarded for at the end of your life, you can do it. Mm-hmm. Like there's no reason to live in the poverty state. There's no reason to live in a scarcity mindset. There's no, like life in, in itself is abundant in the simplest terms. Life in itself is abundance. Now you need to figure out how to make more of that. Yeah. You know, you brought up a really good point, Sean. I haven't actually defined bliss the way that I see it. Do you mind if I do that really quick? I'd love for you to do that. Okay. So bliss, from my perspective, is not about being happy all the time. It's not about sitting in a yoga pose and closing out the rest of the world. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. That stuff. She said it, yeah. folks. She said it. Her yeah. name is Monika Sawyer. <laughs> Get the yogis mad at you. Yeah, bliss is a really deep sense of joy and contentment and the confidence that you can handle anything that comes your way in life. Mm. It doesn't mean that we don't have Got bad it. days. It doesn't mean that we don't experience bad emotions. It just means that the place that we live, what we might call home emotionally, is this place of mm-hmm. joy and contentment, and we can come back to that quickly. So that's right. really what it means to me. I like it. When I think of when I think of bliss, if I had a blissful moment or if I was living a blissful life, I would just think that I am more resilient than I am right now. I would think <laughs> that when I wake up happy. And it, and I don't ever think that oh I'm living the perfect I don't think there is a perfect life because mm-hmm. you could you could back out of the driveway and somebody could could hit your car and now you're not living a perfect life because your car's totaled like right but if I was living a blissful life if my car was totaled I could just go get another one That's it's like right. oh well that sucks I'm kind of upset now because I really like that car and I'm gonna be upset for a little while I'm gonna be mad and angry. But then I'm going to just go buy another one and everything's forgiven. You know what I mean? What wouldn't be a a blissful life is if my house burned down, one of my children were sick, right? Right? So at any given moment, I believe that it could be taken away from you. So I like to think of it as living in blissful moment to moment, not Mm -hmm. like the big picture. I like to live from blissful moment to blissful moment. And it's all about how we create those moments. It's all about what we do inside of those moments that make it blissful. Bliss doesn't come until we make it. What do you think? I'm with you. You know, when you talk about the car getting hit or the or your kid being sick or the, the house burning down, those are all circumstances. And mm-hmm. bliss really is not circumstantial. Bliss mm-hmm. is the way that you are, that you create within yep. anything that happens around you, right? So. Yeah, of course, if your house burns down or your kid's sick or your car gets totaled, you're going to get pissed off, right? You're going to get irritated yeah. by it. But it doesn't mean that you live in that place. And the important thing is how fast can you come back to creating mm-hmm. more moments of success rather than staying in the anger and the upset? Because here's the other thing. You're, it's really hard to problem solve when you're pissed off or when you're yep. emotionally unbalanced, Right. So if any of those things happen, if you're able to get back to a blissful place, you're also able to fix the problems much more quickly. So the internal is then affecting the external in such a big way that not only are you able to emotionally get back to bliss, but you're also able to literally bring your your life back to a place that supports that bliss better. So you fix the car, 
You know, you help your child to get better. You file it, find the better care. You get your insurance and build yourself a new house, right? But you do those things in, in a problem-solving way, more like playing a game, rather than getting so stuck in the emotional trauma of it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And that's why I mean building more resilience. I'm just more resilient than I was before. I've reached mm-hmm. another state of mastery. Right. Right. Yes. It's emotional emotional resilience. That's exactly what yep. it is. Yep. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Monica, I want to thank you for being an amazing guest and give my listeners that free gift. Tell them one more time where they get it. Blissfulinvestor.com. And then at the very, uh, at the very top, they can just download that report. Perfect. And I'm going to go definitely that soon as we hang up uh for your book and everything else where can they pick up your book and know more about you so to um pick up my book just go to amazon um it's choose bliss the power and practice of joy and contentment and i just released another book literally two days ago sean um, nice yeah, it's your amazing itty bitty book about blissful investing, the 15 keys to creating massive wealth on your terms. So, um, if you actually, that's a very long title. So if you, <laughs> if you look up, it, it, Monique, wow, that is a long title. <laughs> I know, but if you look up Monique and Sawyer, um on Amazon, you'll be able to find both of those books and you can download those. So you're like mid launch right now. I'm in mid launch. We're probably going to be doing our bestseller campaign in a couple of weeks. But yeah, I'm right. I just literally proofed it. It's so exciting. I love this. I love being an author. I love getting so, it out there in the world, you know? So it's already on Amazon? It is already on Amazon. Then we need to be buying it now. We're not in a couple of weeks. We need to be buying it now. Yeah, you can buy it right now. You can absolutely. <laughs> Everybody, everybody right now, go to Amazon and get the super long title, 15 Keys to, what is it again, 15 Keys to Blissful, Building Blissful Wealth? Yeah, it's Blissful Wealth, the 15 Keys of, of Creating Massive Wealth on Your Terms. I love it. I love the subtitle, On Your Terms. It's, it's super empowering. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm gonna end up getting both books. Yeah, because, and you guys. Well, the one, anyways. I already have the other one, but now I just gotta go buy the second one. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't even know. I thought it launched. I didn't know it was like right now. Right now. That's awesome. Good yeah. for you. I'm so happy for you. Thank awesome. you. All right. So you heard it here. Ladies and gentlemen who are listening to Life Transformation Radio, go get her books right now. Search Monica Sawyer, M-O-N-E-E-K-A, Monica Sawyer. Search on Amazon. Go get the Choose Bliss book and the Blissful Wealth book, Creating Massive Wealth on Your Own Terms. And they will, I guarantee you, if anything is like the first book in her podcast, it will revolutionize the way that you do things because she puts it in a way that you understand it on your own terms. I love the content that you create and the ease of which it's digestible. Sometimes we hear a lot of technical stuff and we're like, I don't know, I don't know if that's for me. It, you, you put out content in a way that makes it easily digestible, and I love that. Oh, thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, Monica, I want to thank you being an amazing guest on Life Transformation Radio, and I hope to see you sometime soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Sean. This is really fun. And yes, we will see each other soon, I promise. Outstanding. Life Transformation Radio listeners, an amazing guest impacting the world around her. If anything resonated with you, please connect with her on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's right there in the show notes. And go to BlissfulInvestor.com, BlissfulInvestor.com. And then go to Core, C-O-R-E, CoreBlissLife.com. Check out what she is offering 
And don't forget to subscribe to her podcast, Women in Real Estate. Or women, what is it? What's it called? That's what it was. I was like, wait a minute. I had it written here. Somewhere. Go subscribe to her show. It is absolutely phenomenal. Heard a couple episodes. I really enjoyed it. And I recommended it to a bunch of other people. So, again, go check her stuff out. It's absolutely amazing. And as we close the show, I always say live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out those core values that you hold deep in your heart. Living out those core values means that you're living your brand. And so with that, until next episode, live a great life.